Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 1st uh, e -club of the, or meeting of the Rotary E-Club of Southeast USA and Caribbean. Um, I am really, really happy about our, our program uh, this evening. We have one of our newer E-Club members, past District Governor Vince Cataro, speaking about uh, the Rotary Leadership Institute, RLI, Sunshine Division. And I have to admit, I am a graduate of RLI and had a couple of classes with uh, Vince as instructor. And he was, I'm not, I'm not saying this is a joke, he was the best instructor that I had. So with those kind words, I'm just gonna go ahead and hand it right over to him, Vince. Oh, thank you. Um, I'll say some preliminaries and then you have the slides ready to go. <clears throat> well, Do you have the slides? Okay, sorry. I'm not ready. I, I'm not able to. No, I'm gonna, I was gonna talk for a little while, but. Um, okay, I'd go have, ahead. I'll see if I can. I'd have I to go get, get them. Break yeah. up. If not, if you've got them for a backup, that would be probably great. Um, yeah, I'll have to find them. Um, Okay. Uh, Go ahead. That's all right. Well, anyway, thank you um, uh, for your introduction. I appreciate it. It's a, it's a pleasure to be talking to you. How many of you have uh, taken at least one part of Rotary Leadership Institute? If you can just put your hand up. I got my hand up. Five, a five it looks like five, maybe six. That's excellent. And um, I know that some of you are, are graduates and discussion leaders. Um, let me just give you a brief history of what it is and talk about its relationship to Rotary International and um, what we're doing in the Sunshine Division. RLI, the acronym, um, started in 1994. It was started by a group of Rotarians in New Jersey who wanted to supplement the training that was offered at their district level. And one of the founders is a gentleman by the name of Dave Lynette. And Dave was chair of the international board for a long time. But the board was really a loosey goosey type thing. Um, it was essentially uh, the people who were running the Northeast program were the international board. And then it grew and, and they put advisors on the board but it really never had the strong backing that I think it has now. So let me digress for a minute. <clears throat> Dave and the group started it and they came up with a curriculum of different types of programs. And what they wanted to do was show Rotarians in three parts, what you could do with your, your Rotary future, what, what you wanted to do with it. The first one was um, <clears throat> focused on the first section, first sessions, uh, six individual classes, focused on you, the Rotarian. And then they had one on the club, session two. And then part three was um, your journey in Rotary. The curriculums have evolved over the last 20 plus years. In 2004, RLI came to us and it was spearheaded by several people in our district, 6950, most notably past district governor, Tim Schuler, and several people in district 6960, which is Southwest Florida, um, Manatee County down to Marco Island and over to, all the way over to Moorhaven, Clewiston area by a past district governor named Jim Henry. So those were, they were the two players and then it grew from there. By 2007 or eight, it was a, uh, really growing by leaps and bounds. So the way RLI works is a little bit different from, RL, uh, from Rotary International. We are not a formal program. We are a recommended program of Rotary International. And that is a big deal to the people who founded the organization, RLI because they don't want to be under Rotary's rules. They want to be promoted by Rotary and Rotary has done that. And we're a recommended program now. We're actually called a preferred vendor. 
in rotary language. So uh, we are able to do this program worldwide and the structure is a little bit different. The, the best way I can explain it is the ranks in uh, Army, Air Force, Marines, a little bit off from Navy. Uh, captain isn't the same, for example, in both. Um, I know enough to be dangerous because my dad was in the Korean War. Captain, I believe, is a lot higher rank in the Navy than it would be in the Army. Okay. So the terminology in Rotary, we have the club which is the most important unit of Rotary that we're, we're taught actually. And then you have the district and we're part of district 6950 um, in West Central Florida, you know, Tampa Bay, North Tampa Bay region and West. And then you have what's called a zone and the zone is just a ba basically an amalgamation uh, of districts. And we are in zone 34 and there's 34 in the world. We happen to be in 34. Mm -hmm. Sun, uh, excuse me, uh, RLI is a little bit different. You have uh, districts that form divisions and that's where the difference comes in in the terminology. Our division is called Sunshine and it mimics zone 34. We have the state of Georgia, the state of Florida and the Caribbean. There are eight districts in Florida um, one of the districts, 6960, is in the process of trying to start their own division. More on that later if you care. It's a big political issue. But let's make believe that they come back to us and we kiss and make up. There's eight districts in, in Florida, three in Georgia, and um, three in the Caribbean. But we cover, and this has nothing to do with it, we cover 14 countries because we have um, 13, approximately 13 in the Caribbean. My, my math might be off a little bit. So that's a challenge for us because we have language issues. We have presented the courses in Puerto Rico and Spanish, and we have presented the courses in Haiti in French. We're trying to expand on that. So the Sunshine Division is basically uh, the unit, think of it as our district. That's the equivalency. We have a board of directors, uh, we have an executive committee, we have a chair, we have a registrar, we have a uh, legal counsel, Tim Schuler. we have a chair elect and a chair. I'm the chair elect, I take over in July, just like the district governors, but we serve two year terms. So I have the privilege of serving from 21 to 23. There are approximately 91 divisions in the world that have Rotary Leadership Institute. And it, it covers almost every country in, in the world. Some are single district, especially when you get into Germany on the Austrian border, they wanna operate by themselves and so forth. But for the most part, they are groups of districts, multi-state. I mentioned earlier, the Northeast division was the, the, the first division formed in the world in 1994. They cover, base, they cover um, New England and New York uh, and the Heart of America district, for example, goes from Illinois down to Mississippi and they have multi-states in there and their boards are a lot larger and they're set up differently. We have a board of directors with the executive committee, six members, and then all of the districts have one representative and they're called directors. And they're appointed by the district governor subject to the board's confirmation and or the executive committee's confirmation. Uh, so our board is approximately uh, you know, 20 people. And we meet once a year. Last year we met on Zoom. This year we're going to meet live. And almost every division in the world uses the same curriculum that came out of Northeast. We use a different one. I don't know why that happened in 1994, 95, 96, when they started, started getting real heavy into it in, in, in the early 2000s. We like our curriculum. We update it every year. We cover strategic planning, ethics and vocational service. We cover service projects, community service. There's three sessions on foundation. There's a basics and intermediate and an advanced uh, and so forth. 
We also have uh, two main graduate courses. We're trying to expand them with three, membership, foundation, and public speaking. Public speaking is the one you would take if you wanna become a discussion leader. Uh, so we got a lot of things going on uh, with it. Um, our district representative uh, to the board was uh, Eloy Nunez, past district governor Eloy. I think he's being replaced this year by past district governor Jamie Mick, who was on the board before Eloy as a, um, a director. And um, 6950 and 60 and 70 Jacksonville are probably the three most active, well, 90, those four districts, which is Miami, Fort Lauderdale, are the four most active in the state of Florida. All of them have, um, have done a great job in their own way, but those four are the most active. Um, one of the districts in the uh, Caribbean, I keep forgetting their number, it's either 70-20 um, or 70-30 is, is a big challenge because they have multiple countries with different languages. Puerto Rico is coming on pretty strong right now. And um, Georgia has been weak. There's only three districts in Georgia, but there's one that's pretty strong. The other two aren't as strong, but the program uh, still flourishes because people you know, travel to the middle of the state in Atlanta to, uh, to enjoy the program. We are online now in our district. All three parts are online. We've had over 400 participants and we're pretty proud about that. Um, we're one of the first in the, in the um, United States to do that. We're doing research now to find out how many of the districts in the world are doing it. Um, we have some districts from Alabama join us just for E. Uh, we call them like, uh, like, the, like we have E clubs in Rotary, even though Rotary says you, can, you don't have to use the term anymore, but because you can meet any way you want, we call them um, uh, virtual um, districts because they pay a small membership fee and their people then can come in and take our course. Um, so we've had some graduates from Alabama already, or at least participants. Um, online is, is different. It's a much cheaper fee than, um, I think we're like $15 a session. Um, it, it totals out to be the same if you took them all, but you, you, it takes a while to get them all and everything. But some people want that participation online. They, they, uh, they like it better. We've had a lot of compliments for it. There was a lot of doubt when we first did it, but we did it cold turkey because we wanted to give some people the training. And that's what led to our, some of our discussions with 6960 who wanted to do it face-to-face. -face. They didn't feel that online was appropriate, but we've had a lot of compliments for it. But the, the drawback that some people predicted was that you're not gonna get the feel of face-to-face -face that you would in a classroom where if you're taking the course, um, David, I think you raised your hand earlier. You, uh, you, you've you taken the course. You know, in a, in a session, I could go up to you and, you know, make that eye contact and talk and make that um, uh, that relationship work a little different than I could online because we're just looking at each other through a screen. But some people really, really like it and they want the training and some people wanted it very quickly. So we're going to go live with the graduate classes and see where it goes. Um, and that's led to... a. a a lot more people that we've had to bring into the fold and it's great because they're more involved. We've had to, had, had to have technical people that just sit during a session and make sure that things are going right. You know, like at pets, you know, Alicia, there's somebody in the, in the back room, in the back of the room watching, having the camera and all that and the, the mixing board and all that. We have somebody behind the scenes doing that for each session. And then we've, we've got to have people organize it. And so that's good. We brought more volunteers into it. We have about 150 people that really make it work, even though the board's 20 people. Each district has their own registrar, um, uh, people that do outreach, public relations, and so forth. Uh, we have our own website. Um, it might be in the information that, that we can send to all of you. It's rlitraining.org. And we centralize the registrations. They're not done at the district level. That's, we have to do it that way to keep control over it. It'd be like the district saying, okay, you can register for the district conference through your club, DACDB, or own database. It just wouldn't work. So we, we have it that way. But we, we love the program. I, I became a discussion leader, I believe, in um, 2009, the year I became district governor. 
I took the classes in um, 07 and I took them out of district on purpose. I was in 6960 at the time. I took two in Weston and I took one in Clearwater. And uh, I love to, to facilitate. Um, I've been in different districts in the state. I haven't done it out of state yet. I hope to do that or out of country. Um, come next year when some of the other um, districts start having them face to face, I'm hoping I can do that during my term as president. Uh, uh, if not, you know, I would just wait, but that, that would be a real thrill to do that for me. But it's, it's really a, a good program. A lot of clubs in Florida and Georgia and the Caribbean pay for their members to go. Sometimes they put a cap on it if they get a lot of participation. Some clubs have members that say, absolutely not. I'm not going through it. I don't want to do it. That's fine. It's, it's an alternative method to not only learn about rotary, but to, to learn leadership skills that you can use in your personal and professional life. And we really enjoy that when people come back and tell us that, that they got a lot out of that program. Um, one of my favorite courses to facilitate, believe it or not, even though it's a little dry, is ethics and vocational service, because I try to show the linkage between the two and what Paul Harris was trying to do when he started Rotary and that he was promoting ethics of business, not just service. It was service through our vocation, not just a community service project um, and so forth. Um, and I talk about some real life examples that I had when I was a secretary of a Rotary club to um, serious ethical um, issues uh, that we had. I can talk about them if you want now. I just won't mention names, but they were when I was in the Rotary Club of Naples. And that gets people going in the classroom and they start raising their hand and talking and people get into arguments and everything. I mean, you know, not like a hockey fight argument, but um, it's uh, it's pretty exciting to see that. And I'll stop here and see if, Alicia, if you had the, the slides. Yeah, if you don't, that's if, fine. Let me see if I can go ahead and pull those up. Okay, if you can't, don't don't worry about it. They were bit, there's some promotional slides that we put together to, to right. show prospective um, participants what it would what it would be like, and so forth. And um, I can take some liberties too after we get the new curriculum to send some of that to the, the members and so forth. Just don't tell Margie I did it. <laughs> no. See if you can pull uh, yours. Go ahead. See if you can pull yours up. I, I couldn't, I was just trying to do that. That's okay, it's no big deal, it, it's fine. Um, so, um, anybody have any questions right now? I have a question. Yes. The discussion leader, is that anything like Toastmasters? Yeah, um, I've never been through Toastmasters, but I've, I've heard of it. And I know Rotary has a relationship with Toastmasters now. Um, but it's, it, it's similar to that because the skills that you learn there, you certainly can use in the classroom. Mm. So it's, um, uh, yeah, I was in Toastmasters for three years and yeah. that's the reason I was asking if they were similar. There, there, there's a lot of crossover. Yeah, there really is. And, um, we've, we've got a lot of facilitators and we call them discussion leaders, facilitator. We use that, those terms synonymously. Um, we have a public speaking class right now, and I think we're going to be influenced by the curriculum in that public speaking class greatly by what happens between Rotary and Toastmasters, this uh, relationship. And that, that is a graduate class. Some people take it because they just want to learn. And some people take it because they want to become a discussion leader, we require it. We used to have a special training session for discussion leader. We revamped it and changed it a little bit more because people commented on it and said, I think if you made some tweaks, you can do this and people would learn more about public speaking, even if they don't want to become a discussion leader. So um, that, that has really helped. Yeah, I see them coming up now. Um, Let's see if I can. Yeah, one of them was the experience. Um, Oh, by the way, if you're if you're looking at the screen now that Alicia put up in the um, on the left hand side, you'll see the, the logo that reminded me to tell you, we uh, even though we have this uh, recognition by Rotary, which we're very happy to have, um, they told all um, RLI divisions across the world, we got to take the logo out 
their logo out of our logo. So it's like, welcome to the team. Oh, by the way. <laughs> so we're going to put a globe in there. Um, so you, you can see our new logo where it says RLI Sunshine Division. And um, it's got the sun bursting and then the RLI logos on top of it. That RLI logo, they're, they're going to, RLI also already changed it. So we're just going to adapt it. And it's going to be a globe inside the, the spinning wheel on it. But um, okay. the, one, the one in the middle is the, if you can open that one, the experience. Um, I don't know if I can, if I can open it here. No, I'm having a hard time opening it. I'm sorry okay. about that. <clears throat> All right, you, you can close it down, that's fine. But this is what I was talking about, that logo, yeah, over there. Um, like I said, there, there's, there's a lot of cultural differences too, like you have in Rotary International, not just in, in RLI, the basics, the basic thing to remember is that we want to be able to teach people um, about the future of Rotary and uh, the past, the present, the future of Rotary. That's what the goal is. And to, to uh, form new leaders. Um, there was a push a few years ago to maybe change it to the Rotary Learning Institute. Some people have said, no, I, I don't agree with that because we're trying to teach future leaders, not just ro in Rotary life, but in your professional and personal life as well. Oh, um, if you haven't taken any of the courses, uh, I'll make sure Alicia has all the information for the members. Please look into it. Even if you just want to give one of the online courses uh, uh, a buzz. When I say courses, I mean, um, I really mean individual courses, because if you if you go live to an in-person session and sign up for session one, you're going to sit through, um, or part one, you're going to sit through like six classes or sessions. But if you sign up online, you're doing it one at a time. So you can, you can pick and choose. You don't have to start with part one, session A, you know, whatever it might be that so we have that. And we have a, the rotary history um, session. We changed, it was so boring um, at the beginning. It was, it was awful. Um, we changed it to a Jeopardy game. And it's pretty fun. It's a little hokey, you know, and everything, but you'd be surprised there are people that come in that have 20, 25. I had one Rotarian with over 30 years experience and said, really? Hmm. I didn't know that. And it, you know, it's not going to change your view on Rotary, but you know, he didn't, he didn't know that. Um, uh, the one thing 30 years in Rotary, what, what is the one foundation thing we talk about? Um, the first donation was $26.50 from the Rotary Club of Kansas City. Um, that's in the Rotary history books and the foundation book, the hundred years in the foundation. Some people, uh, you know, don't know that. And they said, I went through Rotary training for years and I never knew that. Does anybody know it was why, why it was 2650? Was the money left over money. from a conference. Right. Right. That was the money left over for, for, for a conference. So here's a trivia question for you. Who was the first club to receive money out of the foundation? You know, I do not know that. It started in with Arch that would happen to be my old club, Elyria, Ohio. Ohio, right? Elyria, right? Elyria, Ohio. Yeah, oh. it was an anonymous donation by Paul Harris. Really? And as our historian always said, there's no greater thrill in life than to do something anonymous and be found out. So <laughs> Paul Harris gave the $500 and it went to the Crippled Children's Society of ah. Ohio. March Which became Dynasty. Easter Seals. Oh, Easter Seals. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> another trivia question. Um, what was the first project? And be careful on the answer. A lot of people jump. What was the first project, the very first project from the original Rotary Club of Chicago, which was Rotary Club One. Build an out, build a outhouse in downtown Chicago. That was their, that was their first community service project. Well, their right. very first project was the horse. Was the horse? It was vocational and community. They bought right. a horse for a local doctor so he could make house calls. Right. Very good, James. Very good. Yeah, really, really good. Everything. Some of the questions are easy, and 
it's kind of hokey on the history, but it's, it's fun. I, I give gag gifts out when I do it. And I have team names like Bucks, Lightning, uh, Rays and stuff like that. Yes, Will. Yeah, uh, Vince, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that taking RLI can help people in their, in their personal or business lives. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the strategic planning course alone uh, is worth, I know here locally, it's taught at one of the colleges for about $1,500 to corporations. So that could be quite a bit of help. But Rotary is, is a very complicated organization made much clearer through RLI and these uh, three parts that yeah. we go through. So if you're gonna be part of a complicated organization, good to know about it. This is a great way. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because um, there, there's there's some courses that uh, or sessions that we've we've brought forward and we've changed a little bit. And one of them was called Rotary Beyond the Club, and I don't think that's an appropriate name. And or well, they changed it, <laughs> whether I like it or not. And what we try to do in that one is tell people that there's such a world out there beyond your your club, and some people you know walk in and have no idea. We tell them, don't worry about it. You, didn't, you weren't expected to know all this when you went into your club. And the one thing that really gets to me that I don't, that I, uh, I have a hard time with is when people who are, you know, really, really into it and have, and participate in a lot of different things above the, the district level at the zone level and so forth. And um, because there's positions out there as well. And that's how you make your way up if you wanted to be a director in a, of a zone, and then you wanted to get into the high high level rotary position. Um, you know, they take it for granted that everybody knows every fact about rotary, and it's like, well, this person didn't even know what zone they were in. I'm like, you know, that person's not running for president of the organization. You know, and 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 we want to be able to teach people, and we tell people in the room, there's no stupid question. There's there's just a whole bunch of answers. I love getting people or fellow Rotarians active in a discussion. And I, I haven't taught an online course. Um, there are a lot of people better than me at it. And we basically handpick people to do that. Uh, we took people who've had experience and we have some people who teach at universities. Uh, there's one in Georgia, two in Georgia that are working on it right now. One is a guy by the name of David Gleichman, who's fantastic online because he does it for a living. Um, so I'm, I'm just talking about classroom experience. When, when people participate and they start, you, the, the light bulb goes off and they really have something they wanna talk about. They may be silent for 40 minutes of a whole session that lasts 55 minutes. And then in the last 10 or 15 minutes, they'll start talking about something that they feel passionate about. And when I did the, uh, that ethics and vocational class one time, um, I had a, a member from it was, it was done in Clearwater and um, most of the participants were in, from our district, but um, I can't remember the, the individual club that this young lady was from. And she asked me a couple of questions right at the beginning. And I said, let's go off script if you don't mind. And I want them to learn and have fun. I don't care what evaluation I get. And we've actually changed that whole system now because, you know, we set it up so that everybody would get high scores, which is ridiculous. You want to do it real. And I went into a couple of examples and um, people started talking and having some disagreements with one another. And it was a very pr productive conversation. I don't want to say argument, but it was, you know, a very spirited um, uh, discussion. One of them involved, uh, if you don't mind, I'll tell them one of them involved a uh, a very prominent member of the Naples community, the, the former uh, CEO of the local hospital who wanted to um, become a member and he was um, nominated uh, for membership. His sponsor was gonna be the uh, editor of the local newspaper, the Naples Daily News. So these are two people that were high end. And, and the editor of the paper was my sponsor. And um, the board turned down his application twice. There were two people that spoke up about some ethical issues that they were involved in with him. Um, and one of them had to do with a contractual dispute uh, 
a per, one of our members was providing services to the hospital and felt that they didn't follow their own procurement procedures and said, I don't believe this person's gonna follow the four-way test. And we had some board members very upset about that. And it was um, a knockdown drag out board meeting. And I was the secretary at the time. And uh, that, was, uh, that was pretty difficult uh, to deal with. And then we, we had another one where a, um, uh, a, a retired uh, airline pilot had just joined and he must have been in two weeks. And I, I was secretary again, and he wrote a resignation letter. And the reason he resigned was there was a, a, a prankster in one of the Naples clubs who um, used to sign in on the guest list with um, names. Um, and he, he got some people really ticked off, but other people thought it was hysterical. And we told him to stop it, but he kept doing it. And um, when he did it, you know, I would cross off the, the name. Like one time he came in and he put Al Qaeda. And, you know, I'd go and cross it out and everything like that. And he put some other things on there that were not very popular. Um, some were funny, like he, he put Popeye. And what was Popeye's girlfriend's name? I forgot. Olive oil. Olive oil. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, but one, one day, um, I, 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 he did one of the names like, like that, like Al Qaeda and I missed it. And, uh, the person who had, it, and we had newbies, new, new members introduced to guests and this guy fell for it. <laughs> and I guess it's not funny, but he, it, everybody, a lot of people laughed and everything like that. So this guy resigns from the club and he says, my ethics are not for sale. So. I told the president, I said, well, you know, that that bothers me more than the fact that he was bothered by what happened at the club and that he resigned. Does that mean my ethics are for sale? You know, because I'm not resigning from the club, too, and everything like that. So the member wasn't even a member of our club. He was a number, member of another Rotary Club in Naples. He was long retired. He visited a club every day. Great Rotarian. But um, he basically dropped out of the scene. So there was... It was, an, it was a double loss because he basically backed off and said, well, I'm not going to participate in Rotary anymore. I'll just go to my club. And we lost a, a promising member. But we got into the ethics of that. So I brought that up with the class. And that was like, I had people on polar opposites. You know, they should have resigned. And then somebody else saying, can't take a joke, get rid of them. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, Will. Uh, uh, Vince, you mentioned... Uh, uh, that one of the things that folks learned in RLI is Rotary beyond a club. Yeah. And uh, I've talked to a number of people who have uh, been in Rotary a long time, had no idea that Rotary had action groups yes. that for folks who are interested in a particular area of focus, like the environment, you know, our new SRAG, or uh, Rotary fellowships. Right. Like uh, Alicia and I are both members of uh, BREW. Beers, Rotarians enjoy worldwide. And they have 120 people on from all over the world at their meetings. It's really it, amazing. It's probably growing. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. You know, since you told me that the last time we spoke, I, I went back and looked at the fellowship list. I think there's one for scotch drinkers, too. Yeah. Um, yeah the <laughs> and fellowship. Wine. And wine. wine. Yeah. The fellowships and, and the um, action groups are all available. Information on the website. And um, the environment action group dovetails nicely with our new area of focus that the foundation has adopted. There are seven areas of focus right now. And the seventh is environment. Thank you for that email you sent out about with the video from uh, past president Risley uh, on that. Will, thank you for that. Um, so we, we try to cover all of that. And the big thing that we try to emphasize is not lecturing uh, to people, which makes the online class even that much more difficult. But there's people that have a skill at doing that. <clears throat> and I want to learn that myself, but um, the classroom is, uh, is difficult when you get into some parts about lecture. Like history used to be how many zones are in the world and you'd sit there and people would look at you like that. Well, you got to tell them. So you, how do you fix that? Well, you try to come in and say, when you get past the district, what is it? 
do we fall off the face of the earth or is the earth round? What, what, what do you what do you think we call it? And that's that's some of the techniques you use and everything. And then some of it's got to be lecture and so forth. So. Yeah, and those were, uh, Vince, those, those were my favorite classes. Uh, you know, any instructor that would come in and <clears throat> not be mean about it, but say, you are going to participate and everybody gets a chance, gets a turn, and then it could be kind of fun. But um, I, I enjoyed it. I, of course, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm an RLI graduate and I'm looking forward to graduate courses um, hoping they'll come online fairly soon. If not, you know, face to you know face to face or in person um, when the time comes. But um, right. it's I, I would recommend it to every Rotarian. I, I thank you. I, I highly recommend it. And if you haven't now, you might just want to check one of them out, and I'll, I'll get you the information. Even if you checked it out online, like I said a few about five minutes ago. So I'm sorry for repeating myself, but. When we go, do go back face to face in, in individual districts, um, then I think it will be back to normal and so forth. Some districts are slowly going to be getting back into that with um, less participants in the room instead of the usual 15 to 20. We try not to go over 20. We really don't want to do a class less than eight. Graduate class, that's the perfect size, eight, because that's all day with the same person and you basically have a full outline for seven hours of what you're going to talk about. Um, and the, the timing is different because there's more breaks thrown in. Um, <clears throat> but uh, please look into it. You know, it's, it's cheap. I don't know. I'm embarrassed to tell you if our club has policy to pay for it or not. But Our club uh, can pay for two, up to three, actually. So full parts. Correct. Okay, so that's a lot of online courses. It's basically the same amount. That's excellent. So... Um, I'd look, I'd, I'd look into it, um, recommend it highly. Mm -hmm. And we start uh, Vince, July 1. Sir? Vince, I have a question for you. What, what are the, now I, I'm new into the area, so I'm just trying to understand the structure of things. What yeah. are the boundaries of the sun, of the sunshine division? What it's, it's the state of Georgia. In that? Yeah, it's the state of Georgia, the state of Florida, and all of the islands and countries in the, um, West Indies in the Caribbean. Uh, there's about 14 countries split into three districts. Puerto Rico is its own district, 7,000. And then there's two other districts, 70, 20, and 70, 30. And uh, Jamaica, Haiti, um, St. Kitts, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so that's the, the geographic boundary. It's the same boundary as zone 34 in the rotary world. Okay. And then so third, is this, this is like an RLI structure, if you will, as opposed to a Rotary International structure, because you just said it's basically the same as uh, Zone 34, which and is that's Rotary. By, that's by coincidence. I mean, Georgia has considered, be, before Georgia joined us, they didn't, they weren't with us at the beginning, neither was the Caribbean. They could have formed their own divisions. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Caribbean will at some point because they rely on us and, um, we basically pull the money. We're like the National Football League. Where there are other districts that are very successful that have three, maybe four sessions a year mm -hmm. that are donors to the to them, and even Georgia. Um, Thirty three, for example, isn't the entire zone. It's just a few states. It's the Carolinas, and I think part of Virginia. Zone 33 goes all the way up into Delaware now, Pennsylvania. Right. So it, it's only by, thank you for pointing that out, Brad, but it, it's only by coincidence. Georgia came in because we recruited them and they were basically three districts. They, they, they didn't have interest in one of the three. They really still don't, but it, it didn't pay for them to form their own structure and spend all that money. And the same with the Caribbean. So strength in numbers. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, man. Sure. Okay. Thanks for asking. No. Any other questions? Thanks for letting me go on. You know, past district governor, you give him a oh. microphone. You give him or her a microphone, and they're not shutting up. So you know that's that's what I've been told. You know, living yeah. with one, it's you know, 
Anyway, oh, well, you know, when I, you I are just, district governor, you can keep. The I was going to talk more, but Alicia kept muting me, so I don't. <laughs> yeah, I've got the power of the mute button. Um, okay, so um, thanks, Vince. I also wanted to um, make mention that as of this past week, Vince is now on our club's board of directors. So we look forward to uh, working more with them as, as the time progresses. Um, I am, of course, knee deep, to say the least, in pets training, which is because it's all via Zoom, it's the whole month instead of just part of a week. So that's been real fun. Um, meetings coming up. We have our first uh, international e-club meeting uh, for our club. It's going to be um, Monday, let's see, it's March. The 15th, isn't it? It is, it is the 15th. Our speaker is- At 11 a.m., 11 yes, a.m. Yes, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Our speaker name is Zaid Abu. Rahman. He is um, Jordanian descent. He is actually a junior at the local high school here, Largo High School. And he is going to be talking about the IP or the honors program that um, it's, it's an international honors program that, the, that he is in in the school. And I actually substitute taught for it several times. And it's the, the students are phenomenal. He is also uh, has many seats, so to speak, in honor societies uh, in the country. And he is a soccer player. However, he had a tackle with uh, a, another team member a couple of days ago and broke his clavicle. So he's, I think he's probably out of the uh, out of the game by now, but it is his spring break, so he has he has offered to speak with us. And then um, April fifth, our regular uh, general member Zoom meeting, we will have uh, Liz Fields, who is the executive director of Rotary's Camp Florida, and also um, our club member, and she will be talking about camp and how it is how it's functioning through the pandemic and what they're looking at going forward. So that's our next couple meetings coming up. Um, any other questions? Are we good at the club? So uh, Jay, are we have, yeah. Alicia, are we having a board meeting right after this or how, because we talked about having the board meetings on the first uh, meeting of the month too. I don't know what you planned. Yeah, I, I don't have a, a board meeting for uh, this evening unless the board members want to stay on. We, we can talk about upcoming events. Uh, we usually have a board meeting every other month. So that would be um, April would be our next BOD meeting. Okay. Um, You've got your hands full with pets right now. So that's understandable. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Kind of. We got... It, you know, it's, it's less time online or less time with, you know, meeting wise, but it's a lot more homework. Um, and it's right now it's every Thursday evening and Saturday morning for me. So it's, it's a, it's good. It, it's a good program. They're, they're doing quite well, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a fair amount of work, but it's, it's fun. So, uh, James, I see you, you're down in Florida now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, you you want to yeah. let the rest of the club know what club you're? Well, with? I'm with an E club. It's it's uh, Rotary District 6600 Ohio Pathways. So we have uh, 40, 41 members, and we're, we have uh, eight states and seven countries. 
that we have members from, which I was going to say, I invite you that next Monday at seven o'clock, uh, we will have as our speaker, uh, current Rotary International Director, Stephanie Yershik. And, and she's also a past uh, trustee of the foundation. If anybody be interested, I'd be glad to send you a link and you can join us. And um, it should be very interesting. I got to hear her at a Zoom meeting and she'll really bring you up the data on what, what's the nitty gritty of what's happening at RI, how they're handling the COVID thing and what's on the horizon. And all, you can forget about memorizing the zones because that's gonna be a thing of the past. Uh, we're going to go to, it's going to go to a whole new structure. So that'll be all interesting. You might want to hear what's going to happen. Uh, so if anybody's interested, let me know. I'll send, cool. I'll send Will and Alicia a link and then yeah. you can share it with your members. Great. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Sounds, sounds good. Yeah. The, well, we're getting your, ourselves set up for another trivia question then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. All right. Yep. Go ahead, Vince. Did you? Yeah, sorry. Um, That's okay. Some years ago, um, I think it might have been back when I was district governor, a decade or so ago, there was some talk about changing the structure to be like Rotary USA North, Rotary USA South, Rotary India. Is that, is anybody hearing that's where they're going with this rather than zones that overlap countries? I don't know. And I think um, Jim just yeah. signed off. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear that, that talk. Yeah, I, I think that would be really a, that'd be a good program. Yeah. Well, you know, it'll also be interesting to see how they uh, assign directors to whatever change they're going to make. Cause you know, yeah. now it's, you know, the zones, you know, the directors basically are, you know, appointed through the zones. So if that changes, it will be interesting too. How, you know, how are the directors then? So yeah, like exactly, that. yeah. Oh. oh, cool. All right. Well, that basically ties up the meeting. Anybody else has anything, any lovely wise words for the, for the benefit <clears throat> of the club? If not, yes, Mr. Will. Oh, I will just say a very quick wise word. Uh, we have uh, now, of course, digested the club surveys that we sent out. And uh, Alicia, Brad, myself, and some others will be working uh, soon on this strategic plan, which will be the roadmap for our club going forward for at least the next three years. So strategic planning is the next big event uh, that'll be upcoming and, uh, and Vince will be looking for your input on that as well okay. as a new board member. So just, just an update on that. Okay, great. Let me see what it takes. So I think everybody pretty much that I see is in Florida except for one person. How's the, how's Chile, Ohio? How's Ohio? Hey, Chile, Ohio. That, that oh. it is, you can tell by the pale face here. We haven't had oh, much. Yeah, we've got two in Ohio. We've got Brad and we've got um, my dad, yeah. Richard Bostorf. So you guys can compare notes. Oh, can't hear you, Dad. <laughs> I have no idea. He's off mute, but we can't hear him. So Brad Tharp, how cold is it up there? Oh, it's not bad today. It's, it's nice and warm 40s. Oh, OK. <laughs> enough, enough to melt the snow. Yeah. All righty. Well, everybody, let's end uh, with the four-way test of everything the Rotarians think, say, and do. Uh, Vince, you want to start us off? Sure. Of uh, the things we think, say, or do, number one, is it the truth? Is it, truth? Truth. Is it fair two? to all concerned? All concerned. Three, 
Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Four. Well, if you're kind of tall, all concerned. All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Nice to see everyone. No, it's it's yeah, drink time. Mm -hmm.